They had Boston and Maine uh, on the cab. And uh, this is heading uh, towards North Beverly. Uh, one thing that shows, well, it shows two things. It shows uh, the, to the left, uh, it shows the, the gas tanks along the Bass River between River Street and the river. And on the right, it shows the uh, water tank. And uh, the, there was a, uh, a, a pipe, evidently, that, 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 that brought water to the, to the spouts such that the locomotives, if they needed a drink, uh, <laughs> they'd stop here and uh, the firemen would usually fill the water tanks. I see, I see. And uh, how, how was the coal? Was the coal just literally shoveled into the, into the furnace? That's what the fireman's job that was. was his job yeah. to do that, huh? Yeah, and it, it's, it's kind of interesting. Uh, uh, you, you learn to uh, n not only throw but fan you shovel at the same time, and that spread the new coals out such that you didn't get so much black smoke, and you got uh, instant burn. So, so you you can get a good fire roaring then. Yeah, you needed heat, and you didn't want to smother the fire. Right. That was the whole point. And uh, later on, engines had stokers because no single human being could keep up with the demand of firing a large engine yeah. uh, with a hand shovel. Yeah. Well. Uh, there it is for posterity. Mm -hmm. Captured forever, Harold, with these fine photographs. Hmm? Now, I see an HB down at the bottom here of this uh, uh, photograph. So yeah, this is, this is when I started getting uh, <laughs> wacky with my new camera. <laughs> and uh, this happens to be, uh, we call them shifters. They're actually, <laughs> actually it's, it's a switching locomotive, an 060. Uh -huh. and these these little uh, tea kettles uh, jostled around freight cars, you know, taking them out and, and putting them into uh, uh, bu buildings. This happens this happens to be something that come up uh, every day to Gove Lumber Company, and that that either bring in uh, uh, freight cars, men, or, uh -huh. or, or building materials that Gove uh, work with. So yeah. then the old freight car that to take out and, and probably go back and fill it again. Sure. Well, in our next program, uh, we're gonna, I'm going to have you show the uh, audience your, the very camera that you use to take all of these fine photographs. Yeah, I still got it being a pack rat. And we'll be, we'll <laughs> be uh, seeing many of, of those photographs coming along in the next show. Let's try and get a few more in here before okay. it's time to close up. And we're up to item 15, Rich, and um, we're at the North Beverly Depot, 1935. Mm -hmm. And this is almost on the same spot as the picture that we were looking at a few minutes ago that was taken in 1911. And it's even the same type of locomotive. It's a different number, but it's the same type. It's, a, it's an American standard type. And this was taken by Theodore Day, who lived in North Beverly and was a teenage rail nut. Mm. And we have to thank him for many of these 1930s vintage train photos. Trains, buses, yep. trolleys, everything. Yeah, you name it. You name it he he right took there. pictures of it. Wonderful. And uh, he's dated this, as I say, 1935, and even had it marked 5.15 p.m. And uh -huh. if that's the case, <laughs> this is probably the, the Essex that's branch. That's what I was going to say. Train. It's yeah. the Essex branch. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next up, we have a 19... Uh, 136 picture, Ted Day again, Rich. Yeah, uh, Ted Day, of course, lived right up the street from here and uh, took many pictures at this location, and some of them are not the greatest quality because he just had a cheap little box camera at that time. This one is interesting because it shows a train just coming over the Dodge Street crossing uh, headed inward toward Boston. And the most interesting part of this is the close-up of the hand crank mm. gate mechanism, which you see right in the left foreground. And you can even see the cranks on it, the, the crank handles. Mm -hmm. And the gate tender shanty is just out of the picture behind the photographer to his left. And one man would come out and grab those cranks, pull off a couple of rings and chains that held them so that they didn't turn by themselves. Mm. And in only about, what, Harold, two or three turns, yeah, yeah. These four enormous gates, yeah, yeah. two on each side of the street, and they were some of them were 25 feet long, 
they were geared such that that one guy he he, he developed it. both arms were developed like the, and he'd keep it in sequence mm -hmm. so and they'd like come down yeah. and, and back up and of course they had counterweights which are these big iron yeah. things oh, on yeah. the side here yeah. which you could you could add to them like you do weights that you yeah. lift yeah and that made it a lot easier but they had a series of what rods under the street mm -hmm. under the pavement mm -hmm. yeah. that turned the ones on the far yeah. side yeah. amazing mechanism when you consider that had to work in the winter when it was below zero in the summer when it was 100 yeah. degrees and that these didn't kink up or snap under the street or what have you Yeah. And of course today that's all gone and the railroad employed literally thousands of men over the years as crossing tenders at every grade crossing at every town from here to creation. Hardy souls. Hardy souls and a lot of them were former operating that's men who right. had been injured yeah. Yeah. or were, were almost right. pensioners at yeah, this point. Yeah. So it was a little side income right. for them to that's right. assume this well, duty. Well instead of dumping them they that's gave right. them a job. They gave them a job as long as they could stand it. And of course this would be Dodge's Row going That's Dodge's Row right. Crossing. Right. Okay, very quickly now, let's do a couple more here. Okay. Uh, September 5, 1936, Beverly, Mass. Uh, I assume down at Beverly Depot, Harold. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, oh, yes, I, yeah. I, I see now. Because Pope's lumber oh, in the background. That's, that's what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. It's it's heading in, into Boston. Okay. And, and mm -hmm. you can see the signal. I, I, j I just had to orient myself to the right. Yeah, you're looking and outward. Th that little building is right on the uh, Water Street and and and... What was it? Bridge Street. Bridge Street. Right on the corner. Right, right at the corner of River there. Street we, we Bridge. Would, it, it is still standing, and it's yeah. part of Monaghan's Monaghan, Monaghan, Lumber, Lumber yeah. Company. That's part right. of his office building. That's 1936. Right. Yeah. Okay. We're back up to North Beverly in 37, uh, Rich. Mm -hmm. And again, another, another Ted Day classic, and this shows the depot uh, full front-on view from the track side, and you'll notice that there's these little advertising signs now begin to pop up all over the stations, which the railroad made a little money on. And that was a phenomena that began in the in the early 30s and lasted right up until the end. Mm -hmm. And the train is outward bound, probably going to Portsmouth, and is being uh, pulled by an Atlantic type locomotive. Uh -huh. Okay. As much as I don't want to, and we don't want to, we, we're going to stop here and call it a program, as we're nearing our time. And we have uh, tons of pictures to go, and we'll get right to them in our next uh, next program. Uh, and uh, I want to thank you fellows both, Harold Boothroyd, a curator of the Benjamin Conant Collection at the Wenham uh, Historical Society and Museum, and Richard Sims, the curator of the Fine Collection, the Walker Collection, Lawrence Breed Walker Collection at the Beverly Historical Society, uh, from which many of these photographs are coming to us today. <clears throat> We're going to look forward to having you both back very soon, and we'll continue with another part to our uh, look back onto the steam era, the railroad Uh, as it used to be, time's gone by and gone forever, Harold. Yeah, indeed. Mm. Afraid so. Okay. Well, we thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us this evening, and we hope you'll join us again when we next bring you another edition of Beverly's Times Past. This is Ed Joseph saying so long for now. <laughs>